Thank you, Jimmy. All right, gotcha. Um, heading into the, the Champions League, last season in some of the, the big games, you talked about the lessons your young team would learn. So kind of heading into a, a second Champions League campaign, how much do you feel your team has learned and how much better stock do you heading into this season's competition? Well, we'll, we'll see. Um, the, the players that were here last year, and I was talking about that with the young players, particularly the Bayern Munich game, because it was such a high-level opposition, it would have been a learning curve for them. And that's the Champions League. It's the it's the top club competition in world football, as far as I'm concerned. So they'll be better for it. And then, you know, they'll want to improve this year in that. The players that we've brought in, some have more Champions League experience than others. We generally have younger players. So it's important that we try and make sure we learn any any lessons as we go because the, the Champions League is so cutthroat that you have to have absolute focus uh, against the level of teams you're playing, particularly that we start against Seville. And we'll see. Darren Lewis. Hi Frank, um, I, I don't know whether it's by, by whether it's instinctive or whether it's deliberate, but you've worked really hard to protect Kepa when you've done interviews, even when you've recognised that there are issues to, to, to address. You've worked really hard to protect the person, the player. And I just wondered if you could talk about why you felt that's so important. And I, I don't know whether it's because you've worked under managers who were good man managers, but you, you see, it just seems to be something that you're very keen to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it's my job to do, Darren. And, you know, it's Kepler's the goalkeeper at this club. We know he came in here, in it, which is a big transfer. And there's no hiding from that. It, it certainly draws people's eyes and the attention goes on Kepler as it is. He's been Spain's number one. At the minute, he's Spain's number one, stroke number two. Uh, but the important for me when thing for me when he's here at Chelsea is that my players, if they're in difficult moments, of course, it's one of the huge things in football is confidence. And Kepa needs to be supported in that way. And I'll always support him in that. And he knows that behind the scenes because of how I talked to him, how I played him. And last year, there were some tough moments for him. But we, we kept trying to find the right solutions. And that's that's my job to do that. You know, I cannot control every moment of performance on the pitch, but I can certainly try and protect the players that I choose from to go out on the pitch um, and work with them in the week. The goalkeeper one is always a specialist um, position because you spend a lot of time where they work with their with their coaches, but my responsibility as manager remains the same. Matt Law. Hiya, Frank. Can you hear me? Hiya. Hiya. Um, you, you've obviously been a brave coach so far, and you want your team to play in a brave way. Does there ever come a point where you think about trying to take an element of that bravery away to try and protect leads and? If you get into a lead, we see with some other managers that they can go very negative to try and shut a game down. Would you ever get to a stage where you'd consider that? Yeah, no, I would not. I, I'm certainly not wanting to play brave football in, in the last moments of a game. And that was my message from the side throughout the second half, that we needed to go longer. We needed to miss out their press. Don't think the players did that enough. We tried to play too much. And some of that is ingrained in the players that they're wanting to try and play football. It's certainly nothing that's something I'm not a big advocate of. If high pressure is coming, missing out the pressure is certainly a route to get the ball into the other half and get up the pitch and then use our players up the higher end of the pitch. And that was probably my biggest disappointment in the second half that the players didn't put into action that message. OK, last question in this, the Mondays, Paul Rowan. Yeah, hi, Frank. Um, ju just picking up on that point, um, I mean, uh, Hacking Zia gave the ball away right in front of the technical area like shortly before the third goal for Southampton. Um, and you mentioned trying to beat the press there. Um, are you a bit concerned that, that, you're not, that, that your, your message is not getting across to the players? You know, you say you want them to go along and it wasn't really happening. Does that, does that give you a concern about, you know, the, 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 the communication or, you know, or, or is, it just, is it just a very strong-minded or, or what's... What, what, no, there's, there's, you see I, I don't know. I think you've got me wrong there. I'm not concerned about the communication. We, we work very hard for the week to have that. What I'm talking about is game management. When games turn on you in the game, sometimes you have a... Uh, the players obviously have to gauge that on the pitch. That's part of being the top player and Chelsea are where we want to go. So it's absolutely the player's choice. And if we, uh, if there's moments where we have to see out a game, then the players have to do it on pitch. There's no miscommunication on that point at all. Okay, that's it. Thank you, everybody. See you later.